to share us with any insights from what's happened in the festival so far? Because we're yeah. part of a bigger festival, aren't we? Yeah, so the Creative Bravery Festival um, online finishes today and um, then from the 1st to the 12th of November, we'll be on site here in Glasgow and taking some of the Creatively Brave um, sparks of inspiration and conversations that have happened across the festival um, to this site. And really the theme of the festival this year has been get on with it. And it was great to hear, uh, you know, Greta talking about blah, blah, blah. Um, the time for talking is over. But the wonderful thing about creative bravery and get on with it is it calls out to each and every one of us. And that's why we're incredibly excited to be here with GSL, because I think that's exactly at the ethos of what you guys do. It's empowering our young people and it's opening up a space for you to have a voice. And we would love to hear your voices today and we would love to share your voices um, at this experience here in, in, uh, in Glasgow. So um, it, it gives me great pleasure to be here. I'm incredibly excited and feel very, very honoured to hear from these young people who are going to tell their story. Um, so thanks both Amy and Alice for an amazing invite. Brilliant. Um, well, on that note, um, we're going to get it started. So as Helen has said, um, we are the... I guess the crew from Global Social Leaders um, and today we're coming to you with what we are calling the GSL Youth Hub at the Creative Bravery Festival and as the theme of this festival is about creative being creatively brave and about getting on with it we just wanted to tell you the story of GSL. Um, so we GSL was co-founded by two incredible people one is the CEO of Future Foundations Jonathan Harper and the other is Katie Granville Chapman, who is the director of the Wellington Leadership and Coaching Institute. And it actually started with a curry and, and has led to a global movement. So I caught up with them earlier this week to ask them, how did GSL start? Oh, thanks so much, Amy. We love that question. And um, so uh, we had a group from Singapore, a school in Singapore, visiting us at uh, Wellington and we were taking them out for a curry. And rather fantastically, John Harper, um, CEO of Future Foundations, was coming too. And these teachers said to us, um, could you possibly run a leadership program for our students over in the UK? And we're like, yes, of course, but could we also invite other young people from around the world? And they were really excited by this idea. And this is how GSL was born over a curry in Windsor. Thanks, Katie. And I think from that, we came back to them and said, well, how about a two week leadership course? One would be leading about learning to lead about yourself and then the other week to be learning to lead others and we invited other schools to come from around the world and interestingly they, they said yes so we ended up with this global leadership course focused on socially conscious leaders and um, teachers came with their young people and um, they came to the UK stayed at Wellington and we delivered this first um, course um, and it had such wonderful feedback both from the young people and from the school teachers that that became then an annualized thing what global social leaders was a two-week summit that, that, that brought together those young people but as time has gone by it sort of has moved on and um, we've run that summit sort of every year um, up until most recently to COVID and I'll talk more about that in a bit. Brilliant. So as Katie and John said, we actually started out as a two week residential opportunity. So we used to host young people from around the world. Um, I was about to see up to about 100, 150 young people from around the world at um, Wellington College for two weeks for an amazing two week experience. Um, we then looked at ways in which we could expand it even further and go out to work with more young people because it was quite a small group we were working with. So we looked at designing catalysts around the world. Um, and we've been fortunate enough to visit pre-pandemic, obviously, Mozambique, China, India, South Africa. Um, and we do hope one day to be able to go back to these places and many, many more. We also then looked at um, how can we engage more young people and make it more inclusive and accessible around the world. And that's when we came up with our Global Goals competition. Um, and we launched this. This will be our fifth year and it's a completely free competition for um, young people around the world to partake in where they 
design a social action project that addresses one of the sustainable development goals. So some of the stories you'll hear from today are for young people who've come from our competition or from our programs. Um, I caught up with John and Katie. Oh, sorry. One of the things that's happened is that we've also expanded in the last year, um, especially in the last two years, and we're now active in 106 countries around the world. Um, I asked John and Katie what challenges they've faced during this expansion, and uh, here is what they said. Um, we don't like, I don't know, I think challenges is a tough question, so, um, and we always like to see challenges as opportunities. Um, but what I'd say probably the biggest challenge for us is that we create this absolutely amazing experience, this two-week summit, and we wanted as many young people in the world to experience it from every background. Um, so we had those young people that could afford to come, and then we had those that we then sort of worked with partners, we fundraised, uh, we worked with the a ABA um, in, in Africa and helped some of their young people come over to the UK, and we, we with Wellington and with Wellington students managed to, to sort of pay for some of these kind of costs. We then went and went, oh, could our staff go out and deliver our courses in country? So we've actually then had our staff, rather than people having to fly to us, why don't we fly to them? And then we can have a bigger impact. So we had some of our facilitators go to India and go to Africa and go to China and deliver our global social leaders courses there. Um, but then COVID arrived, and again, I think for everybody in the world, it's caused challenges. But for us, that sort of um, alongside that, we've been running this global movement, this global competition, and that competition meant that we were still in touch with our young people. They were doing projects, we were able to continue to support them. But then we started running um, GSL courses online, and then we're able to reach so many young people from all across the UK, and then we various partners around the world so we've actually seen that we've been able to make GSL even more inclusive and and, and have a greater impact over the last sort of two years um through through running our programs online and now pass the baton to, to Katie what she thinks is the biggest challenge oh thanks so much yeah it has been such an opportunity actually and we're so grateful um to the internet for the opportunity to connect so many young people um from around the world but we're really ambitious and we'd love um absolutely every young person wherever they are whatever their situation um to be able to join us um in part of this gsl movement um we we're really excited because at gsl fest um in june we actually had a young person in a refugee situation um living in kenya and that was amazing and they were able to connect with other young people i think we had over 70 countries um, represented at that but we'd love to grow it and i guess the challenge for us is reaching um young people who perhaps don't have access to the internet um and perhaps who haven't heard of gsl yet and so we're trying to work with schools as hubs so that they can reach out from where they are in their communities to local schools and um, that model worked really well for us with the African Leadership Academy in South Africa um, and we're really hoping that we might be able to replicate that both in person but also um, online so maximizing uh, the use of the internet there. Um, as Katie and John touched on it one of the biggest challenges that we faced during this last year has been the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, one of the things that became really prominent to us as an organization um, was what we could do during this time. So we were thinking about what was important and we realized that we had a lot to be grateful for, that we were really good at helping, helping others um, and about delivering service action projects and helping young people do social action and about how this was really, really important in terms of how it supports your own well-being and the well-being of others. So that really became the kind of guiding light of the movement during that time. As Katie mentioned, um, one of the biggest things that happened for us during this time was the GSL Festival at home, which is actually how we had the pleasure of meeting Helena and being able to then speak at this event. So one of the things we do at GSL is we connect and collaborate with other really, really cool organizations who are also out there trying to make the world a more sustainable and a brighter place for everybody. So we uh, took the opportunity to bring together eight world regions, over 500 young people, and 43 plus speakers in 2020. And these are just some of the amazing 
amazing people who answered our call to come and inspire and celebrate all the young people and what they were doing as part of the competition and as part of GSLs and movement and to keep inspiring them and motivating them. So this is how we got on with it during 2020. We also uh, answered a call, which was uh, Innovate UK put a call out saying, can anyone help um, in response to education in the UK? So our CEO, John Harper said, yeah, sure, we can do it. We can work with two and a half thousand young people in 200 schools and we can support 250 organizations. And we did pretty much just that. So in the space of four weeks, we turned around our first ever largest online program. We worked with 1,753 young people from 196 schools and we supported 187 organizations. So one of the things we looked at during this period for our course was as we were, many of us were on lockdown and unable to go out and socialize and do the kind of normal social action that we were used to in big community groups, we thought, how can one person make a small difference and how can those little small actions come together to make a big change? And those young people went out and did independent challenges and they raised over 16,000 pounds and completed over 535 partner challenges. Um, we then continued to increase our impact and our reach to our online catalysts. And I'm really happy to say that we uh, continue to do so. So we, um, we were able to work last November with um, the Council of British International Schools and we worked with 190 young people from over 20 plus countries. And then in February, we worked with a really amazing funder, we part of RISE, and we were able to work with 300 young people from 73 countries, which was just absolutely phenomenal. So we really have been able to connect and collaborate with young people all over the world. We've also delivered online programs for schools, which is uh, Chabik, who I think many of the audience are joining us from Chabik today. And in the summer, we connected uh, young people from 20 countries on our GSL Summer of Change. And again, they all went out and did lots of different action independent challenges. I'm gonna hand over to Alice, who's our Head of Social Media and Comms Manager. And she's just gonna tell us a little bit about this slide. Hi everyone, thanks Amy. So one of the biggest ways that we connect with the GSL movement and the way that they connect with each other is through social media. When used in the right way, social media can be such a powerful force for good. So back in February, I launched a campaign called For the Future February, which asked our movement to pledge and commit to an action to help make the world a better place for the future. By making these pledges, those were, who were involved took a small action that then contributed to wider, bigger changes. So here are a few images of just some of the young people who took part from around the world. Now, one of the things that motivates me is the power of being able to connect and being able to create a platform for others to share their stories and create an impact. Amy asked John and Katie what motivates them and this was their response. What motivates me is seeing the GSL students um, doing their projects and when they share um, what they've done and the impact that they've had, that sort of makes me sort of think, right, this is working, we are making a change, we are making a difference. And, you know, it just blows my mind sometimes what the young people come up with, what they try and do, and then what, what, what they achieve. And then the next side of it is to see you know, whilst we've got a global competition um, and we're identifying those that made the biggest impact, seeing the young people in the way they kind of are learning from each other, inspired by each other's projects, and then um, supporting each other with their projects and ideas and realising it's, it's no one really owns a lot of these ideas. Um, the, the only the people that win is, is the communities that benefit from these projects. So that's, that's the ultimate thing is getting that penny dropping moment where young people realise that not about them. Leadership is about, um, you know, enabling others to succeed, <laughs> and that that's that's ultimately what I think we're trying to achieve. Definitely, okay. it's just so inspiring, isn't it, to look at what the young people are achieving and the difference that they're making in their community. Um, like you, often I'll read a project or watch um, a digital submission where they've sent a YouTube video or something like that, and I will be at absolutely blown away by it and um, it's really extraordinary what young people are doing and what they can do so um, for me it's a massive privilege to 
get to help them a little bit on that journey and hopefully, um, like John says, connect them with other young people so that they can kind of help each other to maximise their impact and maximise their growth as well. I think I'm really inspired as well by the impact that doing um, social action projects has on well-being, both of yourself and those around you. Um, it gives so much like confidence um, and it connects you to a purpose that's bigger than yourself and it makes some brilliant, brilliant relationships and friendships, um, both locally within your community, with the partners, uh, within your team, but also globally as well. And yeah, that's where it gets really exciting, like John says, where young people are connecting and collaborating across different continents. Um, so yeah, there's tons that motivates me and I really, really do feel uh, privileged uh, to be involved in this movement in this way. Um, so on that note, um, this is why we're here. We're here today because we want to amplify the voices of the young people that are going out there and taking real action and bringing about real change in their lives and in the lives of people around them. So first of all, we're going to hear from Christy from Malaysia, followed by Lukash from the Czech Republic. We're going to take a short break, but you don't need to leave because um, Jakob, who is going to co-host today with me, Jakob, if you could just turn on your camera so we can see the lovely Jakob, is going to be here through the break time. Um, and Jakob is one of our most important team members as well, along with Alice, and he helps us expand our reach and engage with more young people around the world. At two o'clock, we'll be hearing from Cherry from South Korea, um, Laura from the Dominican Republic, and then Mariana from Armenia, and last but never least, Tanasha from the Philippines. So I'm now going to ask Crispy to come on stage. So Crispy, if you could please put your video on. I can see that you're here and I'm hoping. Um, and I'm going to teach you all a little saying that we have when we do online GSL v um, on events, which is it's about connection, not perfection. So all of these young people are coming to you from around the world. Wi-Fi isn't always the best thing on every single part of the world. And it's also important to remember that a lot of them this is not their first language that they'll be delivering in. And I'm telling you now, and Jakub can second this, if I was to deliver in Polish, you wouldn't be very impressed. And I have to say, I'm blown away by every single young person who has said yes to this experience and how brave they're being. So Crispy, I'm now going to hand over to you um, so you can talk to us about achieving zero hunger through plant-based food. Hello everyone, I am Crispy Neville. I am from Kuninga Vocational College, Sabah, Malaysia. My goal is to help tackle hunger, which is the sustainable development goal number four, zero hunger. No one in this world should remain hungry. No one should worry about food. Everyone should be able to get the nutrition that their body requires, and this requires us to practice sustainable agriculture. I feel bad sometimes that in Malaysia, serving large proportion of food in every occasion like wedding, meeting and parties and holiday gathering, a lot of this food is not eaten. It ends up becoming food waste when there are too many people out there are starving. This data from Zero Waste Malaysia show that 16,988 tons of food are wasted in Malaysia on daily basis and this food is enough to feed 12 million people a day. What makes it worse is that there are 900,000 Malaysians who were hungry in the past years and I believe the number is higher now. Malaysia's food waste on daily basis is more than enough to feed the people who are starving in the country every day. As a Malaysian, I feel guilty sometimes and I wish that I can do something to eliminate hunger in the country. On every single day, could you imagine that almost 1 billion people are starving. This data were taken from the time before the pandemic. It might have got worse when the pandemic struck. Low income nations, especially in Africa, suffer the most and the most vulnerable group. Children all over the world are badly affected that millions of them die every year. 
I suggest vegan diet since it is a climate friendly way of life. If majority of the world population switch to vegan diet or at least consume less meat, we will be able to make a major impact in creating agricultural system that is more sustainable and provide enough food for everyone. Vegan diet will free more space for crop growth for human to consume. Most of our land is used to raise livestock. It will allow crop production for direct human consumption without the need to feed livestock and finally, it will help to lower food price so more people can afford basic food. It is believed that growing crops for direct human consumption will increase available food calorie by up to 70% and these crops are enough to feed an additional 4 billion people to the current population of 8 billion people. This will help to provide us enough food for the next decades where population will continue to grow. If we practice plant-based diet, then we will have less animals or livestock to raise, which means most of our plant food will be consumed directly by us human. As for now, around 36% of crops that we grow are used to feed animals that we raise for consumption. If we switch to vegan diet or diet that relies less on meat, it will drive the price to, of food to its lowest and this will enable us to create enough food supply that people can afford especially in countries that are less affluent. As a culinary arts student at a local vocational college, my team and I once created meat like nugget from tofu. Tofu is made from soybean, which means it is considered a plausible protein substitute for us. We were able to create vegan nugget that tastes like fried chicken, look like it, smell like it, and felt like fried chicken. We hope that we can commercialize our own product one day or at least promote this practice among the community. This is the video of me making the vegan nugget. It is actually very easy and I am sure with better technology and equipment, anyone can just make their own meat substitutes. We believe this vegan nugget can help to feed low-income families and anyone can learn to prepare it. In fact, we can create many food products that are entirely based on plants without using any ingredient that contain any element from animal. I am not telling you to go fully vegan now since I know it is a big decision and it might be a challenging process. However, we can start with small changes in our daily routine like going for laser and laser meat-based meals. In fact, you can always try Meatless Monday. It is a day in a week, Monday of course, where you don't eat any meat-based food. You will enjoy the variety of plant-based food. You can go endless with your options.
trust me, you will beg for more meatless meal. I know Malaysians love to eat fritter for breakfast, noodle or rice for lunch and dinner, and curry is our favorite recipe. We can absolutely substitute this with food that is purely made of plant. We can always eat vegetable roll or known as popia in Malaysia instead of the usual one that contain chicken, beef, or shrimp for our breakfast. As for noodle, there are brand of noodle available in our markets that are made of various types of vegetables. You name it, pumpkin, spinach, or carrot. The shape and the appearance are just like our plain noodle, but they are colorful, more nutritious, and I am sure they are tasty. You can always eat this for lunch or dinner. You can substitute the typical chicken or beef that you use in any recipe with the tofu nugget I have just shown to you. Trust me, they taste just like the usual chicken, and if you serve them with curry, it still tastes like curry chicken. What are you waiting for? You can replace all of your daily meals and snacks with plant-based food. And you can start going vegan for a day in a week. You will gradually fall in love with this new dietary lifestyle. Save your body and save the environment. My idol, Billie Eilish, is a vegan. She is not a bad guy after all. Duh. She can be the role model to us all. If Billie Eilish can do it, I am sure us, her big fans, can do it too. For those who don't know, Billie Eilish is a teen star and a lot of young people love her. She symbolized the voice of the younger generation in which youth served as the head of a community. If we want to change a community, we educate and empower the youth to be the change maker. That is why Billie Eilish, a popular teen idol, can influence young people to make a better decision and choose a better way of doing things, including to eat less meat or to stop consuming it all. V vegan, V victorious. Thank you for listening. Wow, thank you. Uh, thank you for this presentation. I'm I'm, I'm, I must say, like I'm, I'm super inspired by all the, you know, all the data that you've provided, all the education. So I would like to thank you so much. Um, if there's any questions, we're probably going to have time for one or two questions. So if you have any, please add them to the to the Q and A or the chat. If, as you are typing away, um, I must say that you know when you mentioned about the um, the changes in the diet, and I think what's to, to link to the creative bravery, I feel that uh, it's very brave to offer something like that when you know that your culture is very, you know, meat-based, for instance. So you've mentioned like in the morning, the, the different roles. I must say in my, in my culture, in, in Poland, we eat quite a lot of meat. And I think there's, uh, it takes a bit of bravery to talk, even talk about, you know, getting rid of those uh, things that people were so used to over the years. So what, what is your approach when you know when you want to help someone to look at this and despite of the cultural preferences that they have throughout the years what what do you say to people when you meet them in your local community um I actually will be the role model to my friend and get them to taste the food that I cook with the meatless, just some plant-based food. So they, they will probably will like it too, as a human, of course. I want to, them to get to taste the food. 
Perfect. I think that this is such a, such a great way of doing it. And I think it's less of the talking, more of getting on with it and, and doing things. So I guess showing the food and, and showing how great it is and almost tastes the same. I think it's, it's really fantastic. Uh, Helen is saying just, you know, agree, agree with this being brave, love vegan Mondays. It's about the small steps. Uh, you're amazing, Chris V. And I think we all can add to that. Uh, perfect. So I can just have a look at the clock. And uh, I must say that we uh, will be now moving on to our next speaker, Lucas from uh, the Czech Republic, who's going to be talking about water scarcity. I had the, the privilege of, of, of working with Lucas on, on the program last year. So uh, really excited to hear him after all those months and see how, how he's doing and how's the project been developing. So uh, Lucas, over to you. Hello, um, I'm really glad to be here after joining the Global Social Leaders World Catalyst, which was an amazing experience. I also felt really inspired by Chris V's talk, and uh, I'd like to propose something else for all of you so that we can help the world's climate small pieces at a time. The thing that I would like to talk about is how individuals like me and you can create great change through just one small, tiny alteration in our lifestyles. That change is reducing our use of water. And here's why. When we think of climate change, there's many examples of humans' bad habits that spring to mind, like driving cars, leaving a computer on, eating meat, or traveling by plane. And don't get me wrong, committing to decarbonize by leaving all of these things behind is extremely commendable. And you should by all means limit your use of all of these. But one small thing you can do to help a lot is to do with water. Let's have a think. What are some of the defining qualities of water? For one thing, it's extremely heavy. At your home, it might take a single tiny finger movement to open the tap. Instantly, out of nowhere, seemingly, there's a powerful flow of water. Perhaps if you had to carry all of that water that flows to your home effortlessly in buckets, your consumption would decrease significantly. A liter of water weighs a kilogram, and there's a lot of pumps in the back end of our water consumption that do the exact same thing as lifting the water and bringing it to our homes. They're invisible to us. But the real problem with consumption of water, one part of it is scarcity, but the other is power-hungry arrays of pumps, heaters, and filtration systems that are a direct cause of the CO2 problem choking the planet. Because it's not only water you're consuming. By using tap water and bottled water, perhaps even more so, but both of these consume a lot of energy as well. It's kind of like the hidden cost of our water consumption. One of the bravest things that we humans can do is to change our habits. Because habits are the most difficult step to changing as a society. We have traditions, we have learned behaviors, and these are very difficult to move somewhere. Well, what I'm proposing is a brave action for each one of us us people, us viewers, us who have long looked at the issue of climate change and thought that we were powerless. This brave action for everyone is to decrease our tap time by a minute every day. By tap time, I mean the time that takes the time that you have the tap on. If you have the tap on for one less minute every day, for example, by shortening your shower or filling your bath up a little less. And you can save a lot because not even talking about the water itself, one single warm bath takes as much heating energy as to plug in a phone charger in an entire year or to use your television for one week. That's just one bath. And that's not even assuming that there's any friction, inefficiency, heat loss, that's if the pumps that pumped water made no noise and emitted no heat. 
that's also if the water doesn't at all need to be transported, which granted in some mountainous regions, for example, if you live in a valley, uh, the heating cost of water is much lower, but mostly there's a lot of pumping and filtration that needs to happen before water goes to your house. In reality, all this machinery and all these pumps are a massive culprit for carbon dioxide production worldwide. So actually, if you cut just one small minute of your, off of your water bill, you'll be thanked by both the environment and your budget because water isn't going to pay for itself. And even better, if you're very brave, you can inspire people to do the same. My project for the Global Social Leaders Summit was to create a YouTube video about exactly this topic. That's because it's very near to me. And I thought if a hundred people remember that they should save a little water, then it will make a vast difference. And I'd like to inspire you to do something similar, to share it with your friends, to tell your parents, to speak to everyone that you know about how you can really help the environment in a substantial way. So to talk more about the project that I undertook, I made a short two minute video that anyone can watch. It's really the primary focus here is for people to remember. It's not meant to be a seminar or a lecture. It's just so that you have this tiny feeling at the back of your head that water is a very scarce resource. In fact, um, it's actually started trading in Wall Street at about the same time that I created the video uh, that was in December 2020. To trade water alongside oil and gold, that's, that's just a reminder of the fact that water is not, uh, it's not something that we can take for granted. There is so little drinkable water remaining on this planet and we're polluting it by the second. So you, one in 7.8 billion people, can change a lot. And yeah, that concludes my talk, I guess. Um, oh, perfect. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lucas. I think you can you can definitely uh, um, stay on because we're gonna have some questions for you, I'm sure. Um, I I can just say just to to to, to begin be, begin with, I would must say that. You know how I see development you've undertook over this year. How you're talking about this subject? Um, it's I, I can see that it, you're a deep thinker and it's just growing this this knowledge. So um, the, the the video itself it's, was quite amazing. But listening to you and how you talk about this this simple thing of just like one minute short and taking those small steps that's really inspiring, and it makes it almost impossible to refuse this idea. You know, like I'm thinking, yeah, every single time I, I need to do something a little bit more. So thank you for inspiring me. I'm sure there's going to be some questions. Um, uh, Helena, just a comment. You can change a lot. Lucas, I didn't show water. I didn't know water was trading Wall Street. You're an inspiration, a future change maker. And yeah, I would echo that. Like, it's actually shocking news for me that, you know, water is being traded on the stock market. It's uh, what sort of a world did we come to? Um, could I just ask you, because obviously some people might think about water scarcity as being, I don't know, in, you know, some of the maybe countries that are experiencing like high temperatures and have like periodic uh, rain intake and stuff. But this affects obviously, you know, like the rich countries, right, as well. Yeah, so the problem with severe water scarcity is mostly regional. And in some very dry regions of the earth, we have a situation where the water is being dissipated at a rate where it's not replenished fast enough. There is not enough water. Although in some of the more temperate regions, such as Europe and the northern United States, uh, that is mostly not an issue. I, uh, my talk reveals that one of the bigger, deeper issues that surrounds water, not only where it's scarce, but also where it's plentiful, uh, 
is the fact that it also needs to be processed before we use it. So every, every piece of water that we consume, it's usually not ice cold. Mm -hmm. We heat our water to about to upwards of 30 degrees sometimes for the purposes of home use in our bathrooms. And that takes up a lot of energy. So it's really everyone's responsibility to take care of this. Excellent, thank you. Uh, we have a question here from Jonathan Harper. Welcome, John, uh, one of the co-founders of, of the GSO movement. Super inspiring, Lucas. Do you have future plans to develop project further and or raise profile of your video? What's your plans for the future? So right now I'm uh, applying to be a university student, so that's taking up quite a lot of my time. But I still continue to spread this news to more or less everyone I know. And I hope that as I meet new people in the coming year or so, that I will be able to share with them this video and the things I know about water. The concept is not complicated and it's really, it's really just about spreading the word because collective change can do a lot. Perfect. And we have now shared the link to Lucas's video in the chat. So here we go. We are now sharing it to everyone who's attending this event. And hopefully they each will share it with a few people and then, you know, it's, it spirals. So, um, so that's, that's, a, we, we do hope that everyone will be able to, to do that and, and share, share the word uh, further. And um, so what, what are you studying or what, what's the kind of direction you're going to after, after high school? So the topic I'm studying is computer science. But um, I'm also really interested in data science, and that's basically analyzing lots of trends and human consumption patterns as well, which can help us to understand the issue of climate change and where some of these, uh, what the core of the problem is. So I really like applying number crunching to a variety of concepts, including, including of course, water scarcity and I hope that someday my work will have a tangible impact on the issue. Absolutely, and we will be uh, keeping an eye on, on your activities and, and how far you're gonna come because we are all sure that it's going to, you're definitely going places and you're gonna be impacting a lot of people in the future. This is your last opportunity for everyone listening to ask any question uh, for Lucas because before we're gonna go into a short uh, break. I just have a comment from Josephine. It looks great so far. I'm sure it's talking about the video. I will definitely watch this after the event. Well done, uh, Lukas. That's uh, from Josephine. And a question from Alice. What did you learn about yourself personally through taking part in Global Social Leaders? So global Social Leaders was for me really uh a training camp in how to exercise my own right to change the world. So uh, I learned about myself that I can really make an effort that's tangible and that uh, if I share even something as simple as a video with a lot of people and cumulatively, it's going to be measurable. And really that's something important about our human existence is that we don't live alone. We live in the company of others and we work with everyone around us to create change and to contribute to something meaningful. So I hope that um, my message will be passed on and that uh, everyone here will remember that if they tell enough people, anything can happen. Absolutely. Thank you. And I think this is a perfect point to to end, end your talk in the Q&A. So thank you so much for your time, for you know, staying in touch with us and, and coming and inspiring next generation of, 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 uh, of leaders. Thank you so much. Um, thank you as well. My screen. Right, so just moving back to the timetable, I hope you can see. Um, we're gonna go into a little break. So if you need a screen break, uh, please go ahead and come back. Remember to come back in, in, in at two o'clock to hear Cherry. Uh, it's definitely a speech you don't want to miss. 
But if you still want to, you know, stay in the room, don't, don't leave the room. Uh, we will show you a few of the videos to give you a bit of a, of a flavor of what GSL is all about. So we're going to begin with our, uh, one of the older videos, but actually the, the most important ones in terms of how it shows what the GSL movement is all about. Think globally, act socially. Start now. Do you want to make social change on a global scale? Do you want to discover the leader in you? Do you want to be part of a global network of like-minded young people? You can. You can. You can. People say that young people cannot bring change. I say that they are the only people who can bring change. I feel that even if I can't reach out to a whole community or a whole country, as long as I can reach out to one person and affect their life, I think I've done a decent job. Global social leaders will help you identify the change that you would like to see in your community. Discuss the solutions and work on an action plan to be at the heart of this change. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. We get to experience new cultures and amazing sessions about great things that you're actually going to use in your future. Today I've learned something new, I've improved myself, I've enriched myself. It has been a really great experience and an experience that I think would be very hard for me to get from other courses. I hope I can use my leadership skills to encourage others to get involved in projects. Now is the time to adjust global issues in your community. You can create real change in your community. You can make new friends and connections from all over the world. You can be a global social leader. I am 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 a global social leader. Think globally, act socially. Start now. Um, I must say that this 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 one quote just from this uh, golden video, it's it becomes a quote that we talk, we, we just repeat and repeat so many times, and that comes from one of the participants here. Um, that it, some people say young people cannot change the world. I say they are the only ones that can. It's just been such an incredible. Uh, way to, to summarize what fuels us every day when we um, come to work at Global Social Leaders is, is we do have that belief in the young people and what they can achieve. And, and you have already seen the examples today um, from the two students and there's going to be more in, in a moment. So uh, this video talked a lot about the uh, World Summit, and I must say this is my just it's it's been for many years the favorite two weeks of the year uh, coming to Wellington College and working with with amazing young people from around the world and the beautiful uh, scenery uh, and and just um, having this 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 uh, incredible global blend uh, of ideas, thoughts, cultures coming together. Um, this next video that I'm going to show you is um, more about our time in COVID times. So obviously we all had to endure the difficulties, um, but we, uh, I think, came up strong with um, that Innovate UK program that uh, Amy was talking about in the introduction. So you can see a glimpse of what the students actually managed to achieve. Uh, and managed to achieve in the 30-day challenge that followed the three-day catalyst program. Uh, and I want to just uh, just hear, just listen closely to the music that is played in this video, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. I want the change nobody's making The risk nobody's taking I want the change nobody's making The change nobody's making It's your opinion so don't fake it But the chances you're so taking I want you all to know that equality is a human right I want you all to know that we're doing everything to join the fight I want you all to know that this fear we feel is mutual Diversity is beautiful If we stand together we are
Cause I want the change nobody's making The risk nobody's taking I want the change nobody's making The change nobody's making It's your opinion so don't fake it But the chances are so tight Before it's too late Right, um, so uh, I've mentioned that uh, I wanted you to pay attention to the music in this video. So um, that's because this was actually one of the projects. So Tamara, who took part in this program, she decided to record this beautiful piece of music um, that she performed live uh, on our GSL festival as well. So it's it's really quite incredible um, what the young people come up with, you know, from from sounds and music to uh, um, to creating um, to creating um, incredible uh, local initiatives uh, or sometimes doing something completely online. So we had you can see the stats in this: how many different projects, how many different organizations. Because what we also think, it's not always about you coming up with all the ideas. It's also about finding something that you feel passionate about, finding someone who's already doing, uh, already doing, uh, and then powering them to make an even better impact. So the final video in this little break is about our GSL Global Goals competition. So sit back and enjoy. Brilliant. Um, so this, uh, as you can see, this was from, from the competition from uh, a year back. Uh, I can give you a bit of an update that this year, the competition, um, we had 448 final submissions. 
um, which is an incredible achievement still having, you know, the pandemic, obviously, uh, Amy mentioned earlier that, you know, the, the experience of the pandemic is different in different countries at different times. So uh, it's quite extraordinary how many uh, schools, how many teams, how many young people have been involved over the year and are making the movement strong. And the way they do it, it's just simply by getting on with it and, and doing something which is brave, doing something which is just small steps. Um, so we will, let me just bring you the timetable back so you can have a look what's coming up. So we have three, uh, four more incredible talks that we are gonna have. I will like to bring in to the stage my colleague Alice, who will be doing the introductions. Hello. Hello, Alice. Hi, Jakob. Hi, everyone. Um, love those videos. They, they inspire me every single time. I just, yeah, I love watching back and looking at what we've achieved and what together the young people have achieved as well. It's, it's so amazing. And um, been really inspired and, and love the talks from Chris V and Lukash so far. Thank you both for, for coming on and for sharing your stories. Um, and as Jakob said, we've got Cherry up next at two o'clock. Um, which, which is going to be an amazing talk as well. So looking forward to that. So as we still have about a minute um, to go, a minute or two to go, I would like to, because not everyone might know this, but Alice mm -hmm. has been the person who's been very in touch with all the teams, actually, <laughs> on Instagram and other, other places, you know, um, getting, getting all the different posts as well, pushed on into the world. So Alice, could you tell us a little bit more about the, the work that you do with the teams and how people can get involved? Yeah, of course. So part of my role is really about championing youth voices, particularly the voices of the GSL movement. Um, I love it. It's, it's one of my big passions and, and connecting with um, all of the young people in our movement from around the world on a daily basis is so amazing. And, you know, I feel so happy that I'm grateful that I'm able to do that every day. Um, so yeah, so one of the big ways is through social media. Um, we have an uh, Instagram account called Global at Global Social Leaders, um, and the competition teams are encouraged to um, post and use the hashtag GSL Goals. If you have a look in our hashtag GSL Goals, there are thousands and thousands of amazing posts and videos and campaigns run by students from around the world and. That is also how they connect with each other. A lot of teams have kind of, you know, united and connected and, and run campaigns together um, to create a wider impact. Um, so not just in their own countries, in their own communities, but also around the world. And the second way we like to um, speak to the youth movement is through the Feel Good Friday newsletter. Um, this used to be a weekly newsletter that, you know, was in your inbox every Friday and it's been running for over a year and a half now. Um, and in the newsletter, we speak about, you know, kind of good news stories, good news stories from around the world and different youth opportunities that you can get involved in through GSL. Um, but then also other external partners who we like to spotlight and, and give um, their stories as well. So. I feel so privileged to be able to do that um, and, and to speak with you every day. Um, you now know that it is me behind the, the social media accounts and, and behind the newsletter as well. Um, but it is time. I can see it is two o'clock. So I am going to welcome Terry onto the stage. Hi, Terry. Hi, Ali. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, thank you. Amazing, good. So everyone, um, I am really, really happy to introduce Cherry, who is dialing in all the way from South Korea. So Cherry has been making waves in her community um, addressing climate change. She won the Global Girls Competition back in 2020 and has been heavily involved in GSL ever since speaking at the festival and on some of our programmes. 
So today, Terry will be telling her story about what's led her to today and also speaking about her organisation, Greener is Cleaner, which is the project that she started through GSL. So Terry, I'll invite you to share your screen and, and away you go. The stage is yours. All right, thank you so much for the introduction, Alice. And yes, I'll be speaking about the importance of youth activism and how youth lead by example, empowering others, other youth for the future. So a little bit about me is that I'm currently a 15 year old youth activist for the climate. And I work as the founder and leader of this initiative called Greeners Cleaner, a volunteer of Greenpeace Korea, and as the chairperson of the National Environmental Education Youth Steering Committee, I work with the Ministry of Environment as well. So today I'll be speaking a lot about youth activism and how I was motivated to take my journey. And lastly, uh, like some of the parts of my vision of the future of the earth. So beginning with youth activism, I believe that the main definition or the purpose is the organization of young people that is made to create a change in the community or the system that is inside the community. And the key point in youth activism would be that youth young people who are the future are leading change for the future. And when you think that um, activism in the past was usually led by people who had expertise uh, or knowledge, specific knowledge in this area. Now, um, a lot of youth activism movements or group promote diversity, equity, and inclusion. So it allows youth to be in the spotlight, be in the front line of the fight against climate change and other environmental issues to voice themselves and create a change. But you may ask, why should youth take action when there are the previous generations who actually created these environmental issues and not just uh, leave it to them? And I believe there are three reasons why youth activism is important and is crucial at the current stage. And the first one will be ideas. What I mean by ideas is that youth have ideas that transcend those of the other generations, the past ones. This is because we are living in the millennium Gen Z um, century where uh, we can create innovative ideas and think of the future path that we'll be living in. A good example is the founder and CEO of the Ocean Cleanup, which deals with plastic pollution and other uh, waste in the GPGP. And Boyan Slot was only 18 years old when he founded this initiative. The second reason why youth activism is important is that we have the voice. A profound example or figure is Greta Thunberg, the founder of Fridays for Future, who started youth activism when, he was, uh, when she was only 16 years old to create a change. And this is because she and other youth are the stakeholders of the future environment, and we know best about what we need and what we want for the future environment. Last but not least, a lot of um, adults and a lot of international organizations are starting to um, gradually starting to accept youth voices into the decision making table and they're supporting youth activism and um, voicing out. A good example would be the campaigns held by the United Nations, by the UN Youth Envoy and the Secretary General. Several methods of youth activism could be lobbying, like through litigations where you get to edit and um, discuss policies that need some revision or um, some changes in the systematic um, nature of the policy or meeting actually meeting the politicians to discuss your ideas and your vision about how things in the um, policy making or the decision making should go. Raising awareness is also a key in youth activism because it is a method of changing others' mindset and also involving them to join your movement. And lastly, policy proposal is also a method that works uh, pretty well. And this could be done offline, online, through like governmental websites and et cetera. And I believe that all of these methods all combine to the, through the motivation or purpose of attaining the UN SDGs, which are a set of 17 goals um, that stand by the three pillars of economic, social, and environmental. And these goals are kind of like the guide to youth activism and how we can create a change in the society, the goals that we have till 2030. Next, I'll be speaking about my journey specifically, like making it a subjective view and how I started taking action. 
When I was 12 years old, I was diagnosed with an eating disorder uh, called anorexia nervosa. And while I was in the hospital and just locked at home for a month and a half, I was exposed to many documentaries, uh, much like most of them being about climate change. And during that period of time, I decided to take an action for my local community so that I can divert my focus, first of all, and second of all, do good for myself and therefore others. And that is why I came across Greenpeace Korea, a local organization that has headquarters um, internationally to create a change in the local environment. And from that, I um, was a volunteer um, initiating campaigns and starting educating others from my research. Next year, I got to participate in various uh, model conferences, model United Nations, uh, climate strikes held in my country and competitions uh, one of them included um, it called uh, the Global Goals Competition held by the Global Social Leaders, where we actually won the competition through the Initiative Greeners Cleaner. This was a turning point of my journey of taking action because it really motivated me by looking at other projects that have been done and have been going on together with Greeners Cleaner. And also it allowed me to find what I'm good at, what I can improve on, the future goals that I have, and basically my vision about the future. Next year, I expanded my activism and my influence in the community by getting involved in decision-making, meeting, meeting the Ministry of Environment and different corporations about how they can reduce CO2 emissions, waste production, and et cetera. And currently, I am in fifth uh, I'm currently 15 years old and I'm continuing to lobby the government, National Assembly, meet uh, general, uh, director generals or leaders of international organizations uh, and as well as the president of my country to discuss how my country specifically can reach the 2050 carbon neutrality goal and how international cooperation um, can take place to achieve uh, the common goal of the international community. And a quote that I can leave is that taking action, I realized that it is a way to explore your true potential self. And from participating in Global Goals competition and expanding my activism ever since, I realized that taking action for like, even if the ultimate goal of it is to create a change in the global community, it starts by uh, taking action for yourself because service action starts by serving yourself. A summary of what I gained would be a recovery from my illness, uh, as I explained just now, finding my potentials, how I can develop as an individual and as a leader, um, a youth activist in my country, for example. I grew my network, expanded it because I got to meet new people and share my vision with um, various people around the world. And lastly, I gained new skills, um, including communication, research, email writing as well. And this is all thanks to starting and deciding to take action. Now I will be speaking and explaining my initiative Greener is Cleaner and uh, what it really aims to do. It is a youth-led organization that has an international basis currently with 70 members from 44 different continents that aims to empower youth worldwide for, to take action for the environment and thus their futures. And as I said, uh, this organization aims to attain the SDGs of 11, 12, and 13, as you can see on the screen, through the mechanism of partnerships, collaboration, and collective action, which is the SDG 17. Um, we are supported and recognized by various organizations um, on the slide, and we aim to grow our organization um, bigger and bigger so that more youth can feel empowered to take action. So this is like the Instagram page of Greeners Cleaner. And from this page, I would like to tell you four different ways that we take action and create a change. The first one is raising awareness and providing education for people of various ages. We do this by uh, writing weekly articles, creating online or offline media, presentations, campaigns, and even strikes. The second way is um, adopting sustainable lifestyles and encouraging others to join. The members of Greeners Cleaner not only adopt these eco-friendly lifestyles, but also 
through the word of mouth, through social media, we encourage others to join as well. And since we have a local um, national chapter in the school that a lot of our members are in, we are promoting the certification that is given to schools that promote sustainable uh, school buildings, uh, school grounds, and environmental education called Echo Schools. And we have been, uh, through our activism inside school, we have been recognized as the first Echo School in South Korea. Lastly, we voiced ourselves through competitions, policy proposals, and conferences where the audience is big so that they could be involved, they could um, be awakened and start taking action themselves as well. A big key or a value that Greeners Cleaner has is solidarity, a sense of um, belonging, uh, acting together. And this is the value for the sole reason of the recognition that taking action together creates a bigger change. In the beginning, when I started um, my activism journey, I believed that if I take action individually, it is much easier to handle. I could do it myself. I was so ambitious. But by creating this organization involving others, I found out that if individual actions combine together, they create a greater action as a whole. Now I will be sharing my vision of the future of the earth, the status quo, and how collaboration can take place in this uncertain time of the era or the world. So we have the COVID-19 pandemic, which is like the biggest thing in the current world. It's all over the news, it's everywhere. And as it impacted everyone, it is the uh, first wave that we're facing. This photo really represents my um, mind right now because I believe that COVID-19 is not just the only wave that is um, submerging our community, the international community. There's so many waves, so many long-term events that are upcoming that we should not like divert the focus and attention to the only issue that is right in front of us, like COVID-19, but rather think and look ahead with keen minds. Some news um, headings that I've seen recently are that COVID-19 is exposing disparities in global public health systems. COVID-19 has changed the face of the natural world. But if you really think about it, climate change has been happening for so long. It is exposing the disparities in the international community as well as even locally because of um, disparities in income, infrastructure, etc. And climate change itself is the biggest phenomena that um, changes the face of nature itself. So moving forward, I like to propose this um, framework, this methods of monitoring action and partnerships. By monitoring, I mean that there are really a lot of policies that have been created or reviewed already. However, monitoring the progress of the implementation, making sure that they're being uh, done correctly, and finding and analyzing ways in which the policies can improve is crucial to move forward and mitigate and adopt to the different circumstances that the world may face. Next is action, and by action I mean research and development so that more people can get empowered and have the abilities to push individual action to social then global actions. Last is partnerships and um, partnership as the means of uh, collective action. It allows you to involve various stakeholders, invite youth, especially to decision making so that they could be in charge of their own futures. And now uh, this is like the timeline or the steps of being a change maker that I, found, that I uh, learned from future foundations and global social leaders. And the first step is taking responsibility. Responsibility is a big concept, I know, but the main, the pure focus uh, would be that whatever action you take and whatever effect or aftermath that it creates, you, sh you are the change maker and thus you should take responsibility. Number two, three, and four really work together because by pursuing your passion, contributing your talents, it creates a balance of what you're good at, what you're passionate about, like what burns your heart and therefore with that really optimal balance you get to enjoy the journey because you're doing something that is really meaningful for yourself as well as those around you. Lastly, be authentic. This means staying true to the goal that you started from and sticking with it so that um, you, your plan and your vision is sustainable. It, it's not just like a one-time thing. 
And before I end my presentation, I would like to uh, draw this question of what can you do today to start your change maker journey? You start today, start small, grow, involve others, and create bigger changes, as I said. Hop on the uh, change maker journey with me. Thank you. Wow, this is uh, this has been really, really wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Cherry, for yet another amazing speech and a very inspiring one. I am very conscious of the time, so I just want to pass on also a huge well done from Helena. Um, I love your breaking it down into small steps. Thanks, Sherry. These are the ways to get on with it. And before we move to our next speaker, I, I want to pass on one of the questions we got from Paul uh, for you, Cherry, to answer. Um, I'm interested in the role of adults. I wonder if Cherry has examples of how adults can be allies or enemies within her mission. What adults should do? It's a big question, so maybe just some examples would be useful. That is a great question. Thank you, Paul, for the question. And my answer would be, uh, first of all, about adults being allies, a good example would be listening to youth in meetings, in uh, like the round table meetings, or even through policy proposals, because these days, uh, policy proposals by youth are uh, actually being effective. In my country, we have a youth steering committee for environmental education that I'm part of. By joining this committee, I was able to um, create policies that the Ministry of Environment has to implement about uh, expanding youth environmental, act uh, youth environmental activism as well as education uh, in the local community and national schools. So by listening to what youth has to say about what the future environment needs uh, would be a good example of how adults could be allies. Um, but on the other hand, how adults could be enemies would be uh, when they prioritize um, economic development over uh, na natural nature preservation or sustainable development. And um, on that line, I would like to also draw out the concepts of youth washing and greenwashing because although uh, some politicians may uh, try to listen to the youth and implement what they have to say, um, some of these happenings or occurrences can just divert to um, using youth as a mechanism to gain popularity or uh, beyond the spotlight rather than just actually implementing what they have to say. So I think um, these days there are, are still yet more enemies, but uh, we are moving towards a world where there are more allies being made from the adults. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, I think so, Paul says thank you. We have been speaking a lot about listening as part of the festival. It feels important. Um, thank you so much, Chair. We would love to go into more questions, but um, I think what you said at the, at the end is so powerful uh, with you know a, a big message to all the adults listening. So thank you so much again for, for your time, for your presentation, and for a lot of inspiration. And keep going, stay in touch. And uh, I'm sure we'll speak again soon. Brilliant. And Thank you, Cherry. <laughs> Helen is coming on there and giving you a round of applause. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks, Cherry. So um, next up, we have Laura, who is joining us from the Dominican Republic. And um, today, Laura is going to share how she and her team members are working to restore their local oceans and coral reefs. They took part in the Global Girls competition last year and made a massive, massive impact. Hi, Laura, I can see you there. And um, so I can't wait to hear more. I can't wait for her to tell her story to, to everyone watching. And um, so welcome, Laura, and um, over to you. You can share your screen, hopefully. <laughs> All right. Amazing. Can you see that? Yeah, all good. Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Laura Rodriguez. I'm from the Dominican Republic and I study at Punta Cana International School. I am also here representing my Global Social Leaders 2020-2021 team, The Reefs. I would first like to thank the GSL team for giving me the opportunity to be here and share my words with you. I am extremely grateful to be able to speak out for our environment and be part of the overall change. So 
When I first was introduced to the global social leaders, I never really imagined how much it would change my perspective on the world. It is true that I was concerned about our environment before, but after being immersed in the project that my team and I had started, I felt that what we had been doing was not just to win a competition. It was really the start of a long-term journey of environmental sustainability. My team's aim was to restore and preserve our community's coastal ecosystems and to raise awareness of the urgent need for climate change to be addressed. I think that what most motivated me was the support from my community, my school and teachers especially. Without them, I don't think my team would have even heard about the Global Social Leaders competition. I truly think and believe that when you have people supporting your cause, it becomes a lot easier to move forward. And that's exactly what my team did. Of course, there were moments of doubt and uncertainty. Like all the other teams throughout our journey, we were presented with different obstacles, especially due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We created our team in September of 2020, and because of the virus, we were limited when coming up with activities to enhance our project. Ideas such as bake sales, rallies, exhibitions, collecting funds, and beach cleanups were simply not possible at the time. We therefore had to find ways to work around these setbacks. The situation led us to come up with other ideas like virtual meetings to educate students at our school and it also encouraged us to create a social media platform since only by April of the following year were we able to hang up posters in the school premises. On the other hand, our group faced many other challenges such as time restrictions due to our members' busy schedules as well as having to conduct new activities that we had never done before. Faced with these problems, we had to come up with new ways to work around them, manage our situation with a positive mindset, and divide the responsibilities within our group accordingly. I think that the major problem we faced during our journey was organizing our members, especially because a little over a month into our project, one of our members had to resign due to personal matters and we had to reaccommodate the responsibilities within the group. This was definitely one of the lowest points in our project as we lost the talent of one of our members, which could have greatly aided us in the project. And it meant that the security of our team was unclear. We all felt highly unmotivated, making it difficult for our team to collaborate. And at this point, so early into our project, we each debated individually whether to stay in the team or to step down. We knew that every member had to be devoted to the cause and to the work it would take to organize and carry out ideas, which wasn't going to be easy. easy. This is where our peers came in. Our classmates had a huge part in making us realize that we were and still are capable of making a difference. So we came together and decided that for us to be able to dedicate ourselves, uh, we had to motivate each other. We handed out responsibilities, restructured our roles, and reached a compromise when it came to the schedule that we had to follow. For example, when a team member had to, had, was struggling or was too busy to fulfill their role entirely, other members stepped in to help. This level of teamwork and companionship was what really pulled us forward during this tough time. Seeing our unity, another student decided to join our group, bringing in new skills and perspective into a project. After overcoming the, this major obstacle, we were finally working together and could easily face new challenges as a team. But let me not forget what it is that drove my team and I to this cause in the first place. I'd like to take a moment to talk about the significance of the ocean, not only to my community, but to the wider subject of climate change globally. The ocean, especially in tropical regions such as the one I live in, 
plays a huge role in mitigating climate change by absorbing heat and carbon. It also bears the weight of climate change as evidenced by changes in temperature, currents, and rises in sea level. Coral reefs have been my team's main focus from the beginning. The moment that my teammates and I agreed upon working on goal number 14, which is life below water, we knew that we wanted to work with corals and taking into consideration their importance in our area. And the more we researched how they were being affected by climate change, the more we were convinced and we knew that we wanted to come up and needed to come up with a solution for the deterioration of corals. Without corals, co corals, without coral reefs, 25% of marine life would lose their habitat. And not only marine life would be affected, scientists estimate that 50 to 80% of the oxygen production on Earth comes from the ocean. This oxygen is produced by plankton and other bacteria which normally inhabit corals. It is also important to remember that changes in ocean temperature from global warming will have serious effects on typical climate patterns. If oceans continue to rise in temperature, it would create a more volatile environment for more and stronger tropical storms to form, something which is of great concern to my country. An increase in ocean heat will also affect currents and sea levels, harming our coastal regions. So what I'm saying is that to keep a safe and healthy atmosphere, we must not forget to take care of our oceans. Now, learning all this information motivated my team and I to begin our journey. As I previously mentioned, our project began with activities such as spreading awareness throughout our school and social media. During the time of the competition, we rapidly gained a following on our social media account as we posted weekly content and shared our experiences. We then started volunteering at our local marine innovation center. There, we not only expanded our knowledge about coral reefs, but we got to truly understand the challenges that some of our most important marine species have to face so that they can correctly grow and develop. We also got the opportunity to volunteer at the facility. We did things such as feeding the fish and corals, we cleaned their tanks, we helped with the creation of algae, and measuring the temperatures of the tanks, making sure that it was a temperature that would maintain the coral fragments safe and healthy. It was honestly a wonderful experience that wouldn't have been possible without the support from our community. Nevertheless, all these things we did seemed insignificant to me at first. I thought to myself, how are we ever going to make a difference in the world when we can't do much besides spreading awareness? But after a few months, I realized that it was the first step and a huge one at that. And one of the most important steps in any kind of activism, if people are not aware of what's going on with our environment, and if they don't know the causes and effects of climate change, how will we ever unite and halt the damage that we are making to our world? Think about that. Overall, being part of the Global Social Leaders has been a wonderful experience that I will never forget. It really was a roller coaster ride considering, considering all the ups and downs that my team had in terms of motivation, brainstorming, and overall execution of the project. And there were low points, of course, especially when we felt like people were not taking our efforts into consideration. I recall especially this instance where we reached out to several local newspapers and we heard no response from them, which I believe was one of the most discouraging moments of our journey. But we did, however, get to have a section in our school newspaper, which was very exciting, if I'm being honest. Now, when it came to brainstorming and execution, despite our initial struggles, we found ourselves, we found ways to not only make people aware of the cause through social media, but we even encouraged many people to be environmentally active. We had people from other schools and towns reaching out to us to learn more about what we had been doing. And 
it was really when I understood the impact that you can have on others by simply speaking up and sharing what you care about. But our journey towards environmental change has just started. Lately, my team has been working on new projects that I'm sure will make a positive impact, not only in our community, but in the world. Over the summer, we had loads of time to brainstorm, and now we are reunited to we're reunited and ready to implement new solutions in our journey. In the future, I'm looking forward to seeing my community be more involved in climate change and environmentally friendly solutions. After my team's participation in the Global Social Leaders Competition, my school, Punta Cana International School, has implemented various environmental related activities, something which I'm very excited to be participating in this year with my team. In fact, most of my team members and I have joined this new school initiative project called the Ecological Club, where we will not only address goal number 14, but also many other of the sustainable development goals that will benefit our school and overall our community. Again, this is simply the start of a lifelong journey to make a difference in the world and speak up for our environment. So, if you're watching this, it doesn't matter from where, think about any way you can make a change right now. Even the smallest of actions will make a better world. Thank you. Wow, 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 excellent. Uh, Laura, thank you so much. This is, this, you, you've taken, taken us all on, on, on a journey. Thank you so much. Just understanding, you know, the, the process, your, all the team formation, all the things, the challenges you had, and, and also for educating us all. This is this has been absolutely incredible. And I can say we've got, you know, Alice is saying you are really, you really did get on with it, uh, Laura. Laura, this is a great story. Loving the honest journey you're sharing. You're speaking from your heart and touching us all, I believe. And also from uh, Stephanie, Laura, you are such an inspiration uh, for students in the Dominican Republic and everyone around the world. Hashtag Platano Power. Um, fantastic, really, really fantastic uh, stuff. And I would love to hear more about the you know, project and also, also what you're gonna come up with this, this year. Uh, we had one little question, which is kind of hangover from, from the previous talk, which I can um, uh, ask maybe you. If you're president, what will you do to raise the awareness about your issue? And what will you do to change the world, your country? Well, um, that's a very good question. I believe that if I was president, <laughs> I would start spreading awareness or spread awareness in general by making people, like pay, making people know, ma making people aware of everything like I would do a lot of speeches I would make sure that everywhere people had the availability of having education about these topics like education is the main is the most important thing when it comes to spreading awareness so I think that would be the main thing that I would do Excellent. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Laura, the president of the world, the future president of the world, thank you so much for inspiring us today. And good luck for this year and good luck for the future. As, as always, keep in touch with us. Um, we are so grateful to have you associated with, with the GSL movement and, and, and to be able to hear uh, all about your project. Amazing. Thank you so much, Laura. Good to see you again. An amazing talk. Um, so up next, I am super, super, super excited to introduce our next speaker, Mariana, who is joining us today from Armenia. She will be sharing why she is so passionate about reversing the climate emergency and also giving us an insight into what she accomplished through her Global Girls Competition project quality of, of equality. So, um, Mariana, over to you. You should be able to get your slides up. Yes. Amazing. And how are you doing today? Are you okay? Yes, I'm great. Thank you. Great. Okay. Thank you, Doug. 
Um, hi, I'm Mariana. I'm 14 years old. I am Dutch Armenian and I live in Armenia. I'm passionate about our planet and the people living on it. That's why I'm so excited to have the opportunity to be here today and to speak up about how I am making change from Armenia. Um, okay. I'd like to start off with this quote uh, from Robert Swan that says, the greatest threat to our planet is the belief that someone else will save it. Robert Swan is an environmental activist. He's an author and he's the first person in history to walk to both the North and South Poles. Change the world, start with yourself. This is also one of my favorite quotes. And there's so much every one of us can do, even from the comfort of our own homes, to make a difference. Um, and here are some of the easiest ways that you can do just that. First of all, eat less meat and dairy and more vegetables. It is claimed that avoiding meat and dairy is the single biggest way to reduce your environmental impact on the planet. Then you can save energy at home and save water at home. Recycle glass, paper, and plastic if possible. Don't, you, uh, don't use the car as much. Try using public transport more. Or what's even better, bike or walk, and that's also great for your health. Throw away less food. Uh, speak up and spread awareness because there are a lot of people that don't know about climate change or any other environmental issues because um, they just don't have the resources. So be the one to spread uh, awareness and start a project and make a difference no matter where you are in the world. Armenia, because I live in Armenia, I'd like to talk about Armenia for a little bit. Armenia is one of the world's oldest centers of civilization, so it has a very ancient and interesting history. The capital of Armenia is Yerevan, where I live uh, now. Um, the official language is Armenian. Armenia, uh, Armenia's neighbors are Turkey, Georgia, Azerbaijan, and Iran. Armenia is a very mountainous country. Um, there are a lot of mountains, and it's a very beautiful place. Uh, with beautiful nature. Armenia is a very small country, so that's why it's very important for, um, for us to be together and to make a change for our country. Um, Armenia is still a developing country and it has some uh, unresolved conflict, uh, conflicts and a high level of poverty. That's why there's less attention given to um, environmental issues such as climate change. But in the last year, um, there are more recycling bins being installed uh, around town in Yerevan especially. And solar panels are gaining popularity because the summers are very warm and there's a lot of sun. So that's great. Of course, the, there's a lot more to be done, but this is a start and um, there's growing recognition of environmental issues and the need to act. The local social leaders and quality of equality. Um, I'd like to share my journey with you um, for a little bit. How did I hear about uh, global social leaders? Um, I uh, heard about GSL actually from an email from school. Last year, our school was taking part in the GSL competition. Um, and um, I'm also, uh, I'm always very excited to receive emails, so I was the first one to sign up. I called a few classmates and together we decided to um, take part in the competition and um, we named our team Quality of Equality because we believe that equality is key in everything. Um, one of the quotes that really inspired me to get on with it and to really take part in the competition was the following from Emma Watson. If not me, who? If not now, when? Um, our first project was visiting an orphanage. This was the project for our GSL competition. Our goal was to bring educational materials to um, the orphanage and to the children and then spend time with them. Uh, for the money we needed for the educational materials, we held a baking fundraiser in our school. 
Um, and then we bought uh, educational materials for the children because we had already gotten in touch with the orphanage and we knew how many children um, there were and of what age group. Um, so um, we went to the orphanage and it was a, a really fun and eye-opening experience for us and hopefully for the children too. Um, the only not the only, but I think the biggest challenge that we faced was uh, COVID-19, the pandemic, La because last year our schools were mostly closed and it was also dif <clears throat> sorry, um, difficult to get in touch with uh, the orphanage because um, they were also closed for the most time. Um, but we got um, through it and we managed to um, we managed to get there and do our project. The first, the only thing that we, um, the biggest thing that we learned from this experience is that helping one person maybe won't change the world, but it could change the world for that one person. And we really hope that we had an impact on the lives of these children. This summer, we did a survey in Yerevan, Armenia to understand what people think is the most um, important uh, environmental issue right now and a lot of people answered that littering and waste management is one of the biggest issues so that's why we're so excited uh, for this year because in the upcoming few months we are going to collaborate with some environmental organizations in Armenia and we are going to install some recycling bins around town and spread awareness about uh, sorting and recycling waste as well as we are, we are very exciting, excited for this year because of all the projects we are planning to do concerning the, the environment. What motivates me personally? Um, I stay motivated because I love to lead and um, to be creative and I have a lot of ideas that I want to turn into reality and I care a lot about our planet and I know that there's a lot to be done, so I want to grab every opportunity that gives me a chance to uh, motivate other people and to make a change myself. As you saw in my presentation, a lot of I got I get inspired by some uh, quotes. So um, I want to um, to talk about this quote from Will Smith that I really relate to. It says. I want the world to be better because I was here and I hope that more people see it like this. I become a part of the solution. Let's start doing our part for the planet because we can't just take from it. Now it's time to start giving back. Caring about our environment should become something uh, that we do every day without even thinking about it. It should become a part of our lifestyle. And don't wait until it's time because when you think it's time, it might just be too late. So be the change that you want to see in the world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mariana. This, this is again, another fantastic presentation. And, um, you know, on top of all the great things you were talking about, the small steps that we can do and providing just the most incredible one-line quotes uh, that inspire us for action. I must say that I feel really now also inspired to go and visit your wonderful country. It's, it looks so beautiful in the pictures. I would love Thank to you. go on those mountains and, you know, see the castle and, and uh, all those, lo the lovely architecture. And I'm sure you sample some of the amazing food uh, in Armenia as well. So thank you for, for sharing that part of, of your culture and of your community. Um, if there's any questions for Mariana, please type them quick. Um, and I, from, from Helena here, uh, Mariana, I love that quote. That's the very essence of get on with it. And I think one of the, the you know, not only, it's pretty much all of the quotes that you've put together. It's, uh, it makes it so, so, so memorable. Um, so what's, you've mentioned that you've done the surveys and, and you're, obviously planning for this year. So what would you say gonna be your highlights for, for this, this year? And after you answer that, you can also answer Cherry's question, which is which environmental issue goal would you like to take action for the most in your country? So it kind of tackles two of those questions. 
Okay. Um, first of all, um, every environmental issue is connected because our world is a system. So um, one leads to the other. And um, this year we are planning to do a lot um, and we hope that um, um, the COVID situation won't get worse and that we can do all that we plan for. Um, first, we want, um, as I already said, we want to spread awareness more about uh, environmental issues in Armenia because there is less attention given to this. Um, so um, it's, I think in Armenia, um, there are not a lot of people that spread awareness about the environment and um, not a lot of uh, youth environmentalists either. So um, it's great that we all have this experience and I hope that more people will get inspired by what we do. Um, and the next question. It's uh, which environmental goal would you like to take action for the most in your country? So what kind of aspect is most burning in your country at the moment? Um, right now, there is uh, because Armenia is such a beautiful country, it's a waste that um, there is trash um, in many places. So I would really like to educate people um, and to install those recycling bins because uh, people should have this opportunity too and they should know that there is an opportunity um, to make a change. Thank you. I think it's, it's, it's you know, it shows exactly how how it you know change comes differently at different times in different countries and the needs uh, so you know when we look at the project some people might think oh a recycling project it's you know uh, everyone's doing recycling but then you think oh yes maybe everyone's doing recycling in, in my country but so it's it's really important to always look not what's maybe trendy fashionable but what is really the need Needed, in the country, yeah. right? So thank you so much for, for highlighting that issue. Again, wish you all the best for you know, the upcoming year in the competition. We hope uh, to see uh, great progress and we, we have no doubt that you're gonna do amazing things. So stay in touch and uh, yes, let us know how you are getting on with it. Thank you. Brilliant, thank you, Mariana. Thank you, Jakob. So um, last, but definitely, definitely not least, is our next speaker, Tanasha from the Philippines. Through their Global Goals project, her team hopes to achieve a green planet by educating people about the importance of sustainable packaging and implementing it. Uh, Tanasha, you are another dedicated global social leader and I cannot wait to hear your talk today. Um, so I'm going to welcome you onto the stage. You can now turn your camera on. There you are. Hello. How are you doing Hello. today? I'm doing good. Thank you. Yeah, good. Amazing. So I'm super excited to hear your talk. I'm sure everyone else is as well. Um, so when you're ready, share your screen and um, sure. yeah. All right. Okay. So I believe you can see my screen now. So hello everyone, my name is Tanasha and I'm from the Philippines. And I just wanna say everyone who has spoken today has been absolutely incredible. So I'm really excited to share my speech with y'all as well. Right, so with all the environmental catastrophes happening today, from floods to droughts to wildfires all over the world, the IPCC, which is the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, uh, recently released a report stating that we are to experience even more experience, uh, even more extreme weather if we if global warming isn't contained below two degrees celsius and as discussed in paris in 2015 the target was to stay at 1.5 degrees or less but it seems like we're exceeding that way faster with the way the world is operating at the moment now this all seems very overwhelming and sets the idea that climate change is this inevitable phenomenon and that we cannot reverse its effects but this isn't entirely true Personally, the Philippines, where I'm from, has a handful of its own environmental problems. So why do I say this? You know, how can I not feel hopeless when I've experienced climate change firsthand myself? 
So the most recent and concerning environmental issue in the Philippines is the increase in unsustainable waste that has been accumulating over the pandemic. So when the pandemic began and people couldn't go to restaurants and shopping centers to buy food or other necessities, non-biodegradable and non-compostable packaging from online shopping orders and food takeouts especially grew exponentially as the public shifted to purchasing almost everything online, which meant deliveries and therefore packaging for those deliveries increased a lot. And just before this, the pandemic, I used to help out with my family's restaurant business. And I noticed that we were using plastic packaging for our takeout orders. And I soon realized that our business was part of this exact problem. You know, we were contributing to climate change and adding to this waste management issue to the pandemic. You know, we were sending out hundreds of takeout containers each day and all those containers would go through an ineffective waste management system, would then end up in landfills and pollute oceans and then end up in all parts of the globe. So definitely, I thought I had to do something about this as I was involved with this restaurant business and I thought that this restaurant had to switch to using eco-friendly packaging as soon as possible. And with lots of research and talking to employees, it was much harder than expected to shift to using sustainable packaging. The main issue was that there was ineffective communication between eco-friendly packaging companies and our restaurant. So it took several months to make this complete switch from plastic packaging to sustainable alternatives because of how slow the communication was and how long it took to research and reach out to eco-friendly packaging companies. Now, just around the same time this was going on, four of my friends and I joined this competition called the Youths for SDGs, where we were reintroduced to the waste management problem stemming from the pandemic in the Philippines and Southeast Asia. So from here, we were assigned to come up with a solution to this waste management issue. So one of the things we proposed was that we try to bring up uh, the idea of being a supply medium where we would supply eco-friendly packaging to restaurants and businesses ourselves because clearly uh, they weren't introduced to the idea of using sustainable packaging. Now, after experimenting with this idea, it was difficult to implement and put in place. It wasn't easy for us high school students at the time to operate within sectors of business that we weren't familiar with. So when this competition ended, we didn't just want to give up on any plans we had already, you know, we had already put so much effort into them. So we worked out on refining our plans and coming up with our final and main proposal or main idea, um, which was to simply connect businesses to eco-friendly packaging companies through simple communication. So we would use communication platforms to introduce businesses to sustainable packaging companies. And it was our job to explain why going sustainable is necessary for a business. And most of all, how that can be done in a non-complicated manner, of course, with our help. So in this way, we were tackling the main problem, which was poor communication in a much more feasible way than our previous plan, which was having to physically supply packaging ourselves, which is very taxing on, on uh, you know, it's very like takes a lot of effort. So coming up with this idea of just connecting businesses through communication was much more feasible. And so um, Another competition you may have heard of, the Global Social Leaders, was being held shortly after we had formed our organization. So we started our organization with a team of five members, and this is when we decided to finally get on with it. You know, we decided to get on with solving the main environmental problem in our community. Uh, so we took our idea to Global Social Leader Leaders and named ourselves Planeta Verde, which means Green Planet in Filipino. So after laying down our goals as a team and defining the mission of Planeta Verde, which is to reduce unsustainable packaging from accumulating in the Philippines, we were finally ready to actually start doing things. So the first thing we did as an organization was to build a presence on social media. We posted educational infographics about the environment specific to our community to educate the youth on how waste management plays a huge role in contributing to climate change. So these posts that you're looking at right now were highly informative and useful, but unfortunately they took a lot of research and time on our end and not many people were engaging with it. So now what we plan to do is we want to make videos with the same content as they're much more accessible and interactive for people on the internet. So clearly we're still growing as an organization. So next what we did was we started with our main operations 
which was connecting eco-friendly packaging companies to restaurants and businesses. First, we had to figure out how to facilitate effective communication between these two parties. We had to consider things like which platform do we use to communicate? Should we stick with only one platform or use a multitude of them? And who do we reach out to first? And where do we find businesses, restaurants, and sustainable companies to contact? Ultimately, we figured all this out. But what we did first is we reached out to several eco-friendly companies for partnerships. So here are some of them that you see on screen. So some of these companies agreed right away. Some hesitated and then later agreed and others refused our proposal. So this showed us that although we do have pretty good presentation skills, you know, cause some of them agreed to our proposal, um, we needed to work on convincing different types of sustainable companies with a more comprehensive approach to best suit their needs and figure out what they really um, were hesitant about as not every company is the same. And now we're currently working on that. So. Um, after this, we moved on to reaching out to businesses and restaurants. So the same thing happened. Some agreed to a proposal and some didn't. So here are three businesses that have worked with us and are now using eco-friendly packaging. Other businesses that we worked with in the past use eco-friendly packaging only for a short period of time. So now we're working on the same thing, which is um, on how to help businesses stay sustainable long-term and not just order, let's say, um, uh, an order that would that they'd only use for like a couple months. We wanna make sure that they stick to being eco-friendly forever. So the main takeaway from facilitating all this communication and forming connections is that we can always keep learning throughout the process. And since we're a relatively new organization, we know that we still have a lot to achieve and we're excited for this. So despite the slow start where we had to overcome many hurdles, we're proud to say that in the end, everything worked out and we definitely had an impact on our community. The impact can be explained in terms of cyclic consumerism. Sounds complicated, but basically what this means is that instead of consumers supporting unsustainable businesses by purchasing goods wrapped in, let's say, unsustainable pa packaging, um, now consumers support sustainable businesses and therefore give them power to continue such operations. So this feeds the cycle of sustainable business practices. And it's pretty wild to think that we achieved all of this through simple communication. And so what seemed like a very small idea at first turned into an entire organization that plans to do all sorts of things today. So when I was thinking about solving these problems, I wasn't really thinking about the IPCC report or the 2015 Paris conference. I was simply trying to see what I could do in my community to make change. And it just so happened to be that my organization's goals align with what the IPCC report recommends to business owners and investors. So what you're looking at right now is a screenshot from a summary of the IPCC report and I've highlighted the conclusion and it just so happened to be that this lined up with my organization's goals but this wasn't what I was looking at first you know I started off with a very simple idea so what I'm trying to say is if you have a small idea go for it if you want to go ahead and start your own initiative here's some advice that might help you so I'd recommend observing your community and identifying problems in it once you've done this Go ahead and do your research and really get involved by talking to people and don't be shy because people love to give opportunities to the youth and even if you're not part of the youth you know i'd still say um go ahead and reach out to people and so once you've identified what problems exist in your community um you can come up with a very simple solution what what can you do about these problems you know um let's take a an example, Greta Thunberg, she started off with a very simple idea, which was just holding climate strikes. And now she's talking at events, um, you know, for the UN. So, um, you know, what do you want to do? Do you want to start your own organization or do you want to start with a website or a blog? Or do you want to speak at events? Do you want to teach kids about the environment? Do you want to talk to local officials on environmental laws or hold workshops for people? It's all up to you to be creatively brave. <laughs> so once you start, it is important to ask for help and definitely take a look at building a team because it was so important for me to have teammates that shared the same values. So we all could work towards the same goal, which in our case was to have a positive impact on the planet. And I'm sure it's the same for you. So we all brought different skills to the table, which helped our organization grow as a whole. And also as individuals, we helped each other learn, you know, from uh, from one another. And last but not the least, 
definitely utilize the internet. I think this was mentioned before, but being part of the youth in this digital age means that we have tremendous opportunities online. And this is why I highly encourage you to take the most, to make the most out of putting your idea out there by using the internet to help grow your initiative. And I just wanna finish off by saying that there can always be creativity and simplicity. So your actions matter, no matter how small you think they are. And this is how you show bravery. So thank you so much for listening. And I can't wait to see what you have uh, coming up next in store. Wow, wow, wow. And again, this has just been an amazing time uh, um, today and this this your, your presentation is just great so much energy so much inspiration and what i love about you know what you what you've done it's you know you identified an issue a need very close you know in your family environment you start from there and then it grows and grows and i will then now uh pass on what helena said it's i love how you're growing as an organization and thinking of ways of engagement these are all essential skills you're such an example of how to convince companies to get on with it and exactly it's that growth and that growth mindset that you presented today it's really truly incredible thank you thank you so much perfect and i would like to uh, just uh, invite everyone who spoke today who's still um on to just uh, switch your camera, we're gonna do a little close. Um, please join us in the in the gallery. I'm just making everyone co-host so you can join us. Perfect. Thank you so much. So pass yeah. to Amy. Yeah, just to say a massive thank you. It's been uh, an absolute privilege to be able to hear all of you speak today. Um, and a, a huge thank you to Helena as well for inviting us to be part of your amazing festival and for giving us an opportunity to amplify these phenomenal young people's voices. Um, I'm literally blown away and speechless and also a bit teary by listening to all of you talk and seeing how much you've grown even in the time we've seen you in the last couple of weeks. So just a massive thank you for taking another brave step and getting up there and and speaking out about what you feel passionate about and about your journeys. Um, Helen, I don't know if you want to add anything before we close. I'm just, yeah, we're, do, we're actually in a room and we're doing two meetings at the same time. So I'm just to come to my colleague one minute because I just need to say a massive, massive thanks to uh, everybody who presented here today. You've absolutely blown us away. You are the people who just got on with it. You are our future change makers. And um, it's unbelievable. I'm, I'm quite emotional, a bit like you. Um, the world is in safe hands. I just wish you guys were in charge of COP. That, we would be fine. Um, well, on that note, uh, we will leave you with a way that you can connect further with the movement. So for those of you, as Alice mentioned, all of these young people have demonstrated the power of social media is one of the ways in which we can contribute to the conversation and be part of the dialogue. So do check out us on Instagram where you'll find most of these amazing young people are present on it. Also got a podcast channel and a medium channel. Um, but that's us from the GSL uh, Youth Hub. And as always, we would encourage you to think globally. Act socially. And start now. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thanks for tuning Thank in. Uh -huh. Bye. Bye.